We were in North Carolina on vacation and something was quite not right. The last couple games she played, she wasn't quite sharp as she was. I mean, before they were, she was hammering everybody. They were triple teaming her and whatever. She was just like a step off and I saw that and I just figured she's just tired and burned out. Amanda had taken her to the doctor. We had taken her to the doctor. and um, But then when we were on vacation, uh, she just woke up one morning and said, I just, something's wrong. I think having us all together when she got the diagnosis, it, it brought us even closer. You know, we always were a tight-knit family to begin with, um, but this kind of all rallied us and, to support and help take care of her. She got the standard uh, chemotherapy that's prescribed for AML leukemia, and she got through it with the usual sorts of side effects in that she was hospitalized initially for five weeks, and then once uh, we were ready to go for transplant and uh, she had relapsed. Very loving and caring, very supportive of her family members. She was the fun one. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> she had a presence. Yeah, she did. No matter where she went, you know, she was there. And she made sure you knew she was there. She's a fighter. She was. <laughs> she doesn't give up. She was she a does, fighter. She was a fighter ever since she was born. She would, I remember at school, it was elementary school, she was hanging on the, the, the bars. Monkey bars. Monkey bars. Mm -hmm. And they were time and see how long they could last. And she came home, her hands were all bloody, bleeding, her calluses were all ripped off. I said, what are you doing? I said, I didn't want the boys to win. She was gonna be the last one hanging, and she did. So this was just another challenge for her, and she was gonna fight it, and she was gonna win. In her mind, she was gonna do this. Relentless, probably the Still to this day, probably the fastest um, athlete I've ever seen. I still vividly remember when we would train in the field house when it was uh, cold and she would race against the football players and her, you know, sprint would be faster than half of the linebackers, which was just hilarious to see. I think the day that I was named the head coach was the day that Alyssa passed. So there was many conversations without, with the current team, with Alyssa's family, about how we were going to continue to honor her. You know, something that was important to her was not being forgotten, and we wanted to make sure that her legacy lived on. So we all got together, we had some extra time, and they split up into groups, and every, three different groups made three different things. And then we were all going to decide which one of those things we were going to take with us and the chair just made sense and um, it worked and everyone liked it and um, it's grown and it's gone everywhere with us. Alyssa's mantra throughout this whole thing was I've got today I'm not gonna waste it um, and that's what we kind of try to live by carrying on her memory coming up here get to you know you see them all wearing their orange all wearing their like an ox you know t-shirts carrying this lovely orange chair <laughs> to their games um, so it's nice to, to see them continuing to honor her, you know, since the seven years now that she's gone. Having her legacy live on was definitely, you know, something that I don't think anyone's ever going to forget her or she's always going to be a part of ESU lacrosse. And I, we started with wearing orange socks and having orange headbands and to come out here and there's still orange headbands. and to now have number seven on the jersey and even have the sticks personally customized to have an orange ribbon with a number seven is pretty unbelievable. And I think she, you know, Alyssa's made such a lasting impact on this program and I don't, it's never gonna get wiped away. You know, obviously no one on the team at this point has played with Alyssa, but we talk about her, and not only do we talk about her, but we talk about others who are in this scenario who don't get the opportunity to play or finish their careers or, um, you know, being a student athlete is important, and it was important to her, and um, it's important to all of us that are in this room and on this team, and not, not everyone knew her, but everyone can relate, right? And that changes people, you know, something that you think is irregular. You think you go to college and you play in a sports team, you're going to play every game that's promised to you, right? but that didn't necessarily happen for all of us. So um, I think that it's only grown and we all can relate in our own way. Any way you can support people through this trial of cancer is just so important. So any kind of programs that can reach out and help folks, it's a good thing, you know, and there needs to be more and more of them.